Looks like we are at one o'clock sharp. We'll go ahead and get things kicked off. Um, before we get started, um, I wanna make sure that everybody can see uh, my screen today as well as hear me. If anybody cannot, feel free to use the chat function. Um, if you can't hear me, obviously it's kind of hard to do that. Um, but if you can't see my screen for some reason, just drop something in there in chat. I'm not sure if I can necessarily assist you with that, but um, it might just require a login, log out issue or what have you. Um, but everybody should be looking at our ThrottleNet um, screen at this point in time. Um, as we get started, of course, I always want to make sure that my background is COVID approved. We have tried to make this into something more ThrottleNet centric, so to speak. So as you can see here, we have our wine barrel top that has been burned in with the ThrottleNet logo. And then off to the side, we have a mandatory bookshelf that you must have if you're doing a webinar uh, during uh, a stay at home order. Apparently this is a uh, necessary requirement that we have to have a bunch of books in the background. If for no other reason to, uh, I guess, show everybody how incredibly well read we happen to be. Um, I have not read any of these books. These all belong to my wife. Um, so I take no claim of fame as far as this bookshelf is concerned. So kidding aside, let's go ahead and get things started. Uh, again, thank you for, to everyone for joining us this week and really for anybody who was on the call last week for our um, piece on OneDrive. Uh, we truly appreciate you guys joining us for that as well. Hopefully that was beneficial for those individuals that were there. For those that were not, and I'll be reiterating this a number of times through our webinar today, you can check it out at throttlenet.com slash webinars. So again, throttlenet.com slash webinars for any past webinars that we've done, as well as for the webinar that we'll be reviewing today. Uh, in getting started, of course, I want to do my general introductions. Um, first and foremost, you have me, Chris Montgomery. I'm the Director of Sales for ThrottleNet. In addition to myself, I also have with me uh, George Rosenthal. He is essentially the administrator of our webinar today. In addition, we have AJ Rogers, our sales and marketing assistant, uh, joining us that is fielding any chat questions uh, or any questions that happen to come up throughout our webinar today. And then finally, and most importantly, and I truly uh, regret this, uh, we have Chris Glockner on the line. I don't regret having Chris on the line, but I do regret the fact that I did not illustrate the importance of Chris's role with an organization um, during our webinar over OneDrive. So Chris is our service manager. Um, Chris is essentially the gentleman that oversees both our remote help desk within our uh, facility in Sunset Hills, in addition to all of our on-site team members. So he is a very important and integral part of our team. So that said, now that the introductions are out of the way, Again, as I'd stated earlier, for anybody who might have come in in the last couple of seconds, if you're not able to stick around for the entire webinar today, please feel free to check it out later at throttlenet.com slash webinars. Again, throttlenet.com slash webinars. And again, I would also defer you back to that for anybody who might have missed the OneDrive webinar that we did this time last week. So what exactly are we covering today? Well, today it's pretty straightforward. As we had talked about in just the invite in and of itself, we're covering Microsoft Teams. But Teams is a very robust solution. And to be honest with you, um, this solution, the feature functionality associated with it um, is something that businesses should be looking at as they are putting together their business continuity and disaster recovery plans going forward. I think a lot of folks um, were caught a little off guard with some of the situations we find ourselves in today with regard to the stay at home orders and the requirements for folks to work remote. And as a result, I would hope that a lot of those organizations that found this to be extremely challenging are working through creating their own business continuity and disaster recovery plan. Um, I would also encourage you to check out our website as we have assembled a number of pages outlining exactly how to go about that or at least a high level overview of the process itself to assist you in creating a good BCDR plan going forward um, so that you don't find yourself having similar challenges when you're um, working remote. Um, before we get started, and just so everyone is clear on what Teams is, Teams is part of Microsoft 365. Now, since we did this slide deck, and quite literally in just the past few days, Office 365 is now going to be referred to as Microsoft 365. Now, throughout the webinar today, I'll do my best to keep it on task with Microsoft 365. However, there may be those times, of course, um, where I defer back to Office 365. So if I refer to either, just understand they are one and the same. Um, what is included with Microsoft 365? Well, OneDrive, covered that last week. Um, Outlook, OneNote, SharePoint, 
in the full office suite of products as well as some additional bells and whistles. We're gonna be doing webinars going forward around a variety of these different solutions with next week's most likely being OneNote. But today's discussion, of course, is gonna be around Teams. So what is Microsoft Teams and what exactly does it include? So of course, we always start with some marketing fluff from Microsoft. Microsoft Teams is a collaboration app that helps your team stay organized and have conversations all in one place. That's all fine and well, but let's talk a little bit about the specific benefits associated with this because that's really where the rubber meets the road when you talk in terms of what it is and how it can benefit you and your organization. So Microsoft Teams is comprised of a variety of different communication and collaboration tools. There's chat for communications with an individual or a group. There's Teams, again, for also for collaboration with multiple individuals through a slightly different environment. We're gonna cover this today. There's the integration with your calendar and Outlook in general. Uh, there is the ability to make calls using Teams through the Voice over IP feature that's baked into it. We're actually gonna demonstrate all of that today. And there is a location where you can house and share files directly out of Teams. So again, we're gonna talk in detail about what that looks like. So as you can see, there's an awful lot that's included with Teams, but you know, it's not as complicated as it appears on the surface. And hopefully we can clear the air a little bit on exactly what all of this does. So what are some of the benefits of Teams? So the single biggest benefit that we found in any of the applications associated with Microsoft 365, excuse me, um, is its integration, okay? The fact that it integrates fully with the entire office suite of products and all of the Microsoft 365 products in general. So again, it allows for seamless creation, collaboration across a variety of different solutions all under the Microsoft umbrella, so to speak. So in addition, it's got a pretty slick calendar feature that allows you to actually conduct chats. It's, it's integrated directly into um, Teams. And again, we're reviewing that today, but you can actually go in, you can set up calendar entries, you can meet on the fly, you can record people if they're not able to attend by recording through Teams, and you can share files through there as well. Additional benefits are, is it, it really reduces a lot of the clutter that's sitting in your inbox right now, okay? Um, for a lot of organizations, uh, ThrottleNet included, we didn't really experience the full breadth of benefit associated with Teams until we found ourselves in the situation we're in today. So as a result, what I'm finding personally is, is my inbox is a lot cleaner these days because in communications with team members internally, um, they can see my presence, they can see if I'm available, and they can literally talk to me via chat and Teams as opposed to having this back and forth via emails with a bunch of attachments going back and forth and so on. In addition, of course, it's a great collaboration tool because it does fully integrate with the entire Office Suite, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and all those documents and, and solutions can actually be accessed directly in Teams. Now, I will tell you that we are not going to cover that in specific detail today, we'll talk about how to attach and how to share files in Teams, but we are gonna do a webinar down the road outlining how the Office Suite works with all the different applications such as OneDrive, Teams, and so on to kind of keep that all in the right place so that we don't deviate too terribly much. Um, and in addition, of course, you have the mobile app. So it works cross-platform. It doesn't care what sort of solution you're on, iOS, Android, Microsoft, all of the above. If you've got um, any sort of device you can download from the App Store, or Microsoft Store, or the Google Play Store, you can go out and download Teams. Um, I have it running on multiple applications, or I should say um, solutions, and we'll talk in more detail about that as well as we get further into our discussion this afternoon. So given all of its benefits and capabilities, we really had to limit today's presentation uh, to the most commonly used aspects of Teams. However, I don't want anybody to misunderstand. We are gonna cover a tremendous amount of ground today because the solution is incredibly robust and capable of so many things, it's almost hard to condense it down into one PowerPoint slide deck or one webinar that lasts roughly 30 to 45 minutes. So again, we're gonna cover as much ground as we can. However, if you have questions, by all means, key those in using the questions feature or the chat function and we'll do our best towards the end of the webinar to field those questions as we do have an area, especially for those individuals that have specific questions about certain feature functionality. At the very end, we're gonna go a little free flow. So we'll see how that all looks, but again, feel free throughout the webinar today to ask any questions you have. However, if we're unable to get to it, we'll see if we can't get you back 
a direct response going forward after the webinar today. So what are we gonna start with today? Well, we're gonna start with chat. And the reason we're starting with chat is because this is really the way that most people are introduced to Microsoft Teams as a whole. And before I run through all of this, I just wanna let everybody know that Chris and I are gonna be doing a lot of flipping back and forth between screens. We're gonna review exactly how to do these things and we're gonna to talk to that based on the slides that you see in front of you. And then when I get through a certain portion of that, I'm gonna then defer over to Chris and Chris is gonna do a little show and tell and he's gonna give you some very specific insight and detail as to all the items that we cover throughout this. So I just wanted folks not to feel like this is just gonna be kind of a, a dumping of information uh, in a textual content or just discussion. We're actually gonna walk you through each function, function and feature that we review today to make sure that you fully understand what it should look like as well as how to use it. So in getting started here, to start a one-on-one -on -one chat, pretty straightforward. You can just start it by going and selecting the new chat icon at the top of your chat list. Um, once you've selected that icon in Teams and entered the individual's name, you can then begin composing your email in a little box that will show up at the bottom of the chat itself. And then you also have the option to do formatting and so on. And again, we'll get more detail around that as Chris does his demo. When you're ready, you just simply hit the send a message icon, which is a little arrow, if you will, that sits off to the lower right-hand corner of your text box, and this will begin the chat. And you can also start a one-on-one -on -one chat directly from somebody's profile card just by opening it and clicking on their picture in a channel, or you can just do a general search for an individual and start a chat in that way. Now that we've covered how to do a one-on-one -on -one chat, and again, we're gonna demo all this, so just bear with me. Um, we'll also talk briefly about how to do a group chat. So in the case of a group chat, very similar. You'll start group chat the same way you started a one-on-one -on -one chat. You're gonna select new chat icon in Teams at the top of your chat list. You're gonna select the down arrow to the far right in the to field, to being who you're addressing this to. And you're gonna type the name in uh, for the chat in a group name. So you can have multiple chats running and you can have those named based on the type of chat discussion that you're having. For example, you could have a, a team, and we'll talk about this in more detail, or a chat specific to, say, Christmas party planning or the company picnic planning. So that way it's not interfering with some of the other discussions you're having or some of the other channels that you happen to be on. So once you name the group chat from there, this is gonna start that conversation and everybody that you designated that should have access to it will then be a part of that discussion and you can include up to 100 individuals in a group chat. Now, just to be clear, this is gonna be specific to those team members within your organization. There are ways to set this up so that you can actually bring in other folks that use Teams um, that are maybe vendor partners or otherwise. However, for today's discussion, since it's a little bit more involved, we're not gonna get into detail about how to bring in other organizations into your team chats um, specifically. To add people to a conversation once it's started, be it a group chat or a one-on-one -on -one chat, um, just click on the add people to the team button or view and add participants in a group chat, whichever uh, chat session or uh, variation you happen to be in at the time. That's gonna be in the top right corner of Teams. Uh, then type the names of the people you'd like to chat with. It's very similar to what we've discussed already. Select how much of the chat history you want to include and click add. And Teams will save the entire chat history all the way back to the first message. And if someone leaves the group, they can go back to their chat responses and they can see those in the chat history. So there's a whole area to actually go about doing that. If you wanna see who's in chat, all that you need to do is, is hover over where it shows the participants. You can see that on screen here, and that will provide a drop down that will outline specifically those individuals that are currently in the chat session or part of that chat group. And then while in chat, you're also able to attach files. You simply select the pay-per-click by paper clip icon under the chat window. Very similar to how you attach things to emails and otherwise. You're not able to attach a file from either OneDrive or you can upload it from your computer if the file is not housed in OneDrive. Another cool feature about this is you can also do a full blown drag and drop. So if you have your file explorer open on another screen, you can literally click on and hold the, um, the left button down on your mouse and drag it down into the chat window and it will start uploading into that chat session and discussion. When finished, you can add a message if you'd like and then from there, you will simply click the arrow in the lower right-hand corner to send 
and begin that chat or share that file. And then finally, and very briefly, we're just going to cover what some of these different icons mean before we go to a demo with Chris. Um, so first and foremost, whenever you pull up a chat, you'll see a little bar across the bottom where you start your chat. And directly below it, you'll see a row of all the icons that you see on screen here. So briefly, the format icon I think most people are familiar with. This is the one where it's got the A and it's you know clearly got a pen writing on it. Um, pretty straightforward. You can't do a lot with it, but you can add bullets, you can bold, you can italicize, you can do a variety of things in that way. The exclamation point, similar to your email client, is for setting a level of urgency. So your, your default is always going to be standard, just a standard message. You can also set this to important, okay, so it's going to have a big exclamation point to get somebody's attention. And then you can set it as urgent. And with urgent, what's going to happen is it's going to send a notification roughly every two minutes for 20 minutes, notifying the person that you're trying to chat with that you have an urgent discussion that they need to engage in. The paperclip is where you actually are able to attach files either from OneDrive or your PC. And as I'd stated, you can also do drag and drop if you don't wanna use this function. Smiley face, this is something that you're familiar with probably from Facebook and other social media sites. You can simply go in and indicate how you feel about a specific comment via an emoji or something along those lines. Um, GIFs are really something that have taken on life for their own, especially within our organization. Um, we really get a kick out of sharing different GIFs with people throughout the company. Um, if all that you want to do is, is share a GIF with somebody, you click on the GIF icon. From there, you'll do a brief search of just general content, typing in keywords. You can even get so granular. In my case, I just typed in, I live in a van. Everybody knows how it ends. And immediately what comes up, well, Chris Farley doing Matt Foley living in a van down by the river. Okay, so pretty cool. Smiley face, um, that's going to give you the ability to add an emoji or GIF. It's not quite as cool in my experience, um, but again, it does serve a purpose and a function depending on how an individual or organization might want to use it. Calendar, and again, we're going to get into more detail about this later in our discussion, but this is where it actually allows you to go in and schedule meetings on the fly while in your chat. And we're also going to talk in more detail about how to go into the calendar portion of Teams and being able to actually create or do a meet now, if you will. And then finally, the little badge. Initially, I thought this was a light bulb because I can't see anymore. But this little badge down here at the bottom allows you to share praise or optimism. Again, not as engaging as a GIF. I find those to be much more fun to share with people, but still a nice tool. You know, you could say something like, hey, optimistic or fantastic or congratulations on a job well done. So, so I have covered a lot of ground here, admittedly, or at least it seems that way on the surface. But at this point, I wanna hand this off to Chris. Chris, if you could assume things, and we're gonna walk through each one of these different areas that I've covered thus far in detail to show you guys exactly how these functions work within Teams. So Chris, by all means, if you would. Absolutely, and good afternoon, everybody. So like Chris mentioned, uh, Teams is a robust product. So we're gonna cover some of the basics today, what Chris went over, but it's an easy product. Just like uh, OneDrive was, Teams is very easy. So starting off, we're gonna go over how to chat. Um, we'll cover on the individual level, the group level, and then adding members, seeing where those members are. So. First to chat on the left hand side is where all your options are going to be. We're going to go into chat and you'll notice the very top you have new chat. Click it. Now here's where we're going to type in. Say I want to do an individual chat in this instance. I'm going to hit up my service coordinator, Dakota. He got the chat. Now you notice there is somewhat of a previous chat here from when I was testing this earlier. It keeps the context and you have the option to hide chats even if you have them and it'll keep the context. Reason you do that, same as you have with your inbox and Outlook. You keep it, you can keep even Teams uh, more clean that way. So Dakota just hit me back up. Um, real quick response time. Um, I can tell you, and I'll, I'll go into more detail later, that Teams has been an absolute game changer for us here. Um, and I, I'll go through some of that a little bit later. But say you want to create a group now with Dakota and Chris. We can go about this a few different ways. He showed you the first way, which is you're going to go up to the new chat. 
and we're going to go to the arrow on the right hand side that lets us give it a name. So we'll say webinar. I want Dakota and I want Chris in this group. Just like that, I've created a group. It keeps within the context of those two people and it's very easy um, to manage this way. But another way to create a group, and we're gonna do it straight from this group, is say I wanted to add an additional person to this group or see who's in the group. Top right tells me how many members, click on it. I can leave the group, I can see who's in the group, and more importantly, I can add people to the group. That can be done from an individual to create a group. So if I had an individual chat going on, like I do with Dakota, I can actually add a person, Director of Managed Services, for instance, we'll add him. And now he is also in the group. Any message I send here, we'll send to Dakota and Todd. Um, it's a, a very easy, and if you've used any chat programs, it's kind of all intuitive, but it's, it's robust. And I can tell you that this is one of my most used tools um, on a daily basis is Teams. Okay, Chris. Yep. I feel like we cover everything there. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. We will move on here then. I'm gonna steal the screen back from you and I promise this time I'm gonna make sure <laughs> after multiple post-it notes are hanging up on my screen here to remind me to hit share um, so we don't find ourselves lost on a slide somewhere in space. Okay, moving on, all right. The next feature that we're gonna review, um, and as we get further into this for what it's worth, guys, you probably saw we were in the chat function, and if you've ever been in it, up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a couple different icons with a video camera, a phone, and the ability uh, to share your desktop. And we are gonna cover that stuff. I don't want anybody to misunderstand. We're actually gonna get into that at this point. So what we're gonna talk about now is the voice over IP feature that's within Teams. So, before we really get into this, I just wanted to, to express the benefits that I've seen from this uh, under the current circumstances. So, you know, my ability to speak with individual team members or with a group of team members and being able to look at them, have conversations with them, share files with them, um, and share my screen with them has been indispensable. I mean, what I will say is, is that it almost works better in some cases than it would if I were in my office right now with them. And the reason I say that is because in order for me to share my screen with them and I needed to walk down the hall to see them in person, I'd have to pick up my Surface tablet, walk down the hall with them, show them what I'm looking at, kind of get settled in and everything else to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. With, with the Voice over IP feature and with Teams, I, I don't have to worry about that as much anymore. I can literally still have that one-on-one -on -one conversation, show what's on my screen and share files all within the same environment and without the need to get up and walk around and walk down the hall to do so. So I can literally pull someone up, I can start a video call, I can share my screen, as I said, share attachments. Um, and these are all wonderful things. In addition, we have employees, and I know Chris is gonna talk about this shortly, um, this has been a real team builder for us as well because we have individuals within our company that are having things like virtual happy hours. I don't know if anybody else out there through Zoom or any of the other solutions that exist out there are doing this, but these virtual happy hours have been great. Um, the real benefit to them is um, about the worst thing you have to worry about is tripping over the cat in the hallway as you drive home. So again, very nice feature, a lot of benefit coming from it, and I'm finding every day people are finding new and unique ways to use these new tools to stay in communication with one another. So that said, Teams does allow you to set up an actual hosted voice over IP phone system all within the Microsoft 365 environment. Um, for today's discussion, we're gonna focus on internal communications using the voice over IP feature. The reason I say it that way is because there is additional licensing that you can purchase that will actually allow you to pull an actual keypad up and be able to key in direct dial phone numbers or what have you and make outside calls. But for today's discussion, we're gonna talk on how to do internal communications with all your internal team members that are all loaded and located within the Microsoft 365 environment. So how do we make a call from the desktop first off? Well, as you can see, 
get your little number pad is one way of doing it. Um, but this feature, again, the way we're going to cover it today is for only those individuals within your organization. Now, in order to make a call, you first need to have the contact entered in um, Teams speed dial. Now, this is assuming that you just want to make a call to them. Again, we're going to cover here in a minute how if you're in a chat with them, you can just click on a button and make a call with them real quick if you needed to. But if you don't want to go through it from the chat perspective, you can simply go in, create a speed dial for them, and that's how you're going to basically make that call is through that speed dial um, itself. When ready to make the call, you'll just select the calls icon in Teams, and then from there you'll select what user and, and choose from an audio or vo video call, depending on what your preference happens to be at the time. Now, how do we add a speed dial in order to do this? So we're gonna to go to the call icon in Teams, the little phone, if you will. We're gonna select add speed dial. We'll just begin by entering that user's name, the most likely pre-populate. In my case, I'll just start keying in, in the case of Chris Glockner here, CG, um, just his initials, and it will automatically bring him up. It knows exactly who he is. Once that user is found, a window will pop up asking if you wanna add this person. Of course, you'll select add from there, and now you can call this person directly using the Teams app. Now, when you're in a chat session, as I've alluded to a couple of times throughout my discussion thus far, you can make an audio or video call in addition to being able to share your screen at any time. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier because this is a great feature when your discussion starts off, it's just a real quick discussion via chat, and then we realize, you know what, we need something that's a little bit more in depth, okay? When that happens, you can start in chat, which allows you to share files and so on, and then you can add a call via video or audio to discuss whatever it happens to be that you're both collectively looking at. And you can do this by selecting one of the three icons up in the upper right-hand corner of any chat session. Um, again, you're gonna have a camera icon representing a video chat, a little phone re representing an audio chat, and a little up arrow with a screen representing your ability to share your screen itself. And again, as we covered earlier, to actually share a file within chat, um, that's gonna, require that you click on the paper click, paper clip, sorry, itself and attach the file in that way. So giving you a pretty straightforward overview of this process, but Chris, I'm gonna ask you to assume my screen again and give everybody a demonstration on how to create a speed dial, how to make that call out of chat and so on and so forth. So if you would take over. You would take Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so right where we left off, I'm within my chat. Uh, starting off, we're going to go to the speed dial section that's on the left-hand side under calls. Uh, currently, I only have Chris, and as you can see, he's in a meeting, so I would want to add a person or a group. Um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and add my service coordinator, Dakota, again. It says quick, it's going to find it since he's within our organization and it shows he's available. Now, from this uh, box right here, we can video chat him, we can call him, two of the easy options, but I'm gonna go show you the option you'll likely use more than this. Um, this exists and this is great when it goes to organizing contacts, you guys will probably use this a ton, but I'm going to show you where it's used 99% of the time and it's used exactly the same. Keeping in mind, these two buttons right here are the same as if you go into chat, just like Chris said, these two buttons right here, they function exactly the same. But you're going to be within the context of your chat most of the time when you're making a call. And these are the two functions I probably use more than any other functions in Teams. So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate how quickly and how easy this actually is. I'm gonna make a quick uh, phone call first. And then if Chris, if you don't mind, I wanna demonstrate kind of the video uh, part as well. Yeah. So audio call first, you'll see it pop up, tells me who I'm calling. And as soon as he answers, it'll show that it connected. Hello. Perfect. Dakota, you can hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Perfect, I hear you great, man. Thank you very much. I'm gonna hang up with you real quick. Okay. Thank you. So it was that quick, it makes the connection really quick. And I'll go into a little bit later of why this is so cool. But first, I want to show you the video function, right? So right next to that phone, we can video chat. Now, immediately, 
it's going to trigger my webcam, turn that on, which is a different camera than I'm using for this webinar, but you'll see how it also triggers Dakotas. So start that video call. You see I'm over here now. <laughs> And it can take a second. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> and there he is. That's my service coordinator, everybody, there Dakota. So very slick, very smooth on multiple devices. That's important. Um, this isn't limited to just PC. We can be doing this on the phone. In fact, I have oftentimes, um, if I'm having a conversation with, uh, say, my director of managed services, Todd, um, I'm often on my phone upstairs away from my computer. So it's uh, perfect for these little short calls or even video uh, calls. And we'll go to some of those features a little bit later. Thank you again, Dakota. Yep. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Okay, Chris, and back to you. That's the demonstration on how easy really this technology is and how we use it. Sounds good, Chris. Yep. Taking over. All right. Okay. All right. Moving on. So calendar integration and outlook. Um, you wouldn't think, quite honestly, that this would be a neat feature. I mean, it's just a calendar. I mean, how great can it be? Um, however, as I have played with this more, um, I don't know if I'll ever be using the calendar function with an Outlook because this is so much easier to use and allows you to do so much more than what you experience with an Outlook itself. So um, as we had discussed previously, you know, you can schedule a meeting um, directly with a team member right out of chat. We're gonna go through that here momentarily. Uh, in so doing, you can choose Meet Now. Um, when you do this, it will actually open an audio video chat similar to what we just reviewed under the Voice over IP portion of our discussion so far today. And once connected um, and getting everything in place, it'll ask you if you wanna click Join, you'll click Join. And then from there, you'll start inviting people. You can invite uh, as many folks as you want into that chat. It can be, again, up to 100 individuals or team members can be brought into that discussion at any given time. You select each team member by keying in their name, similar to what we had shown earlier. Um, typically, you'll start keying in a name and it will pre-populate in most cases. If it doesn't, you may have to key in the entire name if they have similar initials and what have you. Um, and it also has the feature or the ability to allow you to copy a link and send the link via chat or drop that into an email or otherwise if that is the way that you want to um, invite those team members to whatever meeting you happen to be having at that point in time. So again, a very flexible application in that way. There are two different things we're gonna to demo today. We're gonna to demo A, how to do a meet now, as well as how to schedule an appointment within the calendar itself. And then we'll also go over to chat and we'll show you how easy it is to create a calendar invite directly out of the chat function as well. So Chris, if you wouldn't mind, please taking over my screen again and uh, showing us how we work with calendar. Absolutely. Okay, here we go. So on the left-hand side, you had all your options for uh, chat, teams, calls. What we're looking for specifically here is calendar. There's not gonna be much on it. Um, it's a test account, so obviously I've got a little bit of rehearsal, but I'm gonna show you the the two options I do have up here, which are meet now and new meeting. First, I'm gonna go over the new meeting one because it has more options than the other one. Although, believe it or not, that meet now is what is used more often than not. So for new meeting, if we click on it, we get all the same options you're gonna see if you're creating a meeting with an Outlook, basically. A title of the meeting, who you wanna invite, does it repeat, is it a scheduled meeting? Um, we do have several of these scheduled meetings that I use just like this. Um, internally here at ThrottleNet, uh, if it's specific to any channel, a location, and then details for the meeting. As soon as you would to save this, it would actually send it out and add this on the team member's calendar for each specific, uh, specific attendee. The other option is the Meet Now. So the Meet Now um, is used a ton when real quick I need some ideas thrown around, I'm going to go ahead and show you how that was used. Um, click meet now, meeting with Joe Test, gives you a little, uh, do you want your mic, your video? Do you want a background for instance? Click join now. It goes ahead and connects to a meeting before letting you invite. 
So now you can come up here. You can type in the name of anyone in your organization. It'll send them out an invite and the invite to them looks like a call like Dakota was receiving what you saw on screen. It's an invite to join. Now you can also, if you don't want to do that where it's prompting their screen, you do have the ability to come over here. You would copy it and you could actually send them an invite where they click on it to join. That's if you don't wanna be so disruptive to their screen. So uh, Chris had mentioned a HAP e-hour. Um, this is exactly how we did it. So we all jumped on our computers Saturday night, uh, did a meet now and invited all the people that we knew were attending. Um, it's something pretty cool for us to do and it's nice that Teams has the function to do it. So the last way I wanna show you is through chat. If you wanna send out an invite through chat, you would just click on the recipient's name. You're gonna go down to the bottom and like Chris was explaining before, these icons down here has a nice one for schedule a meeting. Um, typically, I think you're gonna probably do it through the calendar itself, but it does give you a way, it's Microsoft's way really, they're gonna give you 10 ways of doing any one mm -hmm. task. So yes. that is, is true pretty much about anything. So awesome. I believe that covers it and Chris, back to you. Yeah, and for what it's worth, before I take the screen back over again, what Chris was showing here a moment ago as it relates to that, uh, the calendar component of things, um, I used that just yesterday. Uh, I was communicating back and forth with AJ, our sales and marketing assistant, and reviewing some stuff with her. And she said, hey, look, would we be able to talk sometime tomorrow? And I said, yep. And while it was top of mind for me, I was able to go down, click on that, um, the, the calendar icon and immediately schedule the meeting for tomorrow while I was still thinking about it. So it didn't require me bouncing in and out of apps and otherwise I could do it all right there from the same conversation and chat that I was having with her requesting that we get together to have a discussion at this point today. So I will assume the screen back from you, Chris. Thank you second, folks to get that. Okay, all right. So moving ahead. We're gonna cover a little bit about the activity button, okay? So the activity button is the upper left-hand corner for those that have not used Teams, all right? It looks like a bell, as you see here on the screen. Um, you'll select the activity button um, to view your activity feed. And this is gonna show a summary of everything that's happened in the channels that you relate to, either as a team member or otherwise. Now, you have the ability, not just in activities, but also in chat and Teams, to filter. So you can actually go into any one of those three applications or features, if you will, of Teams and actually do a filter based on keywords uh, in chat or specific activities such as being added to a team um, in the Teams function or by keywords, whatever it might be. So again, you have a variety of different ways you can filter, but that's gonna be in effect on the activities button, on the chat button, and on the Teams feature as well, okay? so. You'll know an activity has occurred when you see a little red dot. It's going to show how many activities have occurred specifically to you. Um, and the red dot will basically indicate how many are currently pending that have not been viewed. This will stay there for 14 days. Now, most people will probably have well have seen it well in advance of that. However, after 14 days, this notification is going to expire and will either reduce the count down to any that are still within that 14 day period or remove it altogether. Now, what do all these mean? Well, I'm not gonna spend a tremendous amount of time going through this, but we will just for a minute here. So the app symbol is any specific mentions of you. Uh, the Teams logo there is any mentions with any teams that you happen to be on. The channel logo, which is not really a logo, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, but it is any channel mentions on any teams you're involved with. On um, the back arrows, any replies to posts that you've made. Thumbs up, of course, similar to Facebook and other social media indicates that somebody put a thumbs up, thumbs down on a comment or a chat or something along those lines that you would have with them earlier. The team icon with the plus sign, uh, those are teams that you were added to. So if hypothetically speaking, you're a new team member, or let's say you're an individual who got a promotion within the organization and you went from being uh, having access to a certain number of files and folders and teams themselves, um, this will allow, let's say, for example, you have a management team. And now that you've been moved into that, they would then set that up so that you have access to that and you would get an indication that you were added then to the management team. You can also, with the badge, be made into a team owner. 
So again, for instance, you move up into a new position and now you're overseeing a team of folks because your predecessor parted ways or was moved up into a different position within the organization. You now own that team. And as a result, you're going to get an indication that you've been assigned and made the team owner. Trending posts are going to be your little up arrow. And then finally, suggested posts and teams. So it does look at, believe it or not, trending and things that it thinks that you might be interested in within the team's environment. Okay, so covered activities. Uh, here we're getting towards the end of things. So now what we're going to talk about is how to create a team in Microsoft Teams. A little bit redundant there, but it is what it is. Um, and how to post and, uh, files to that team. So you have a variety of different options when you talk in terms of doing this. So you select Teams on the left bar. That's pretty obvious and straightforward. However, you have the option then to select join or create a team. Um, we create a new team or you can select a team you would like to join or you can select build a team from scratch. So you have a lot of different ways that you can approach this in general. Now, you then from there will determine whether or not this is a public or private team. So again, that will give you designation. We're going to show you how to do that here in a second. And you will also assign it a team name. So in our case, when you see it here momentarily, you'll see that we have a number of teams within the organization. Some, for those that are current clients of ours, you may already be familiar with those respective team names. And then again, as I said, you'll assign it a team name and a description of what it happens to be. So as I made the reference earlier, say you're doing the company picnic, you can create a team specific to the company picnic and call it the company picnic planning team, however you want to do it. So, and then once you've created your teams from there, now you can start going in and adding team members by just entering their name, or you can add an entire group that already exists if you want to do it that way too. So Chris, I think I've covered enough ground as far as just the general. Why don't you go ahead and take over the screen and show people how this looks um, in reality? Absolutely, taken from you now. Thank you. Okay, so on the left-hand side, you see Teams right under chat. Now, what's important to note here, and one of my favorite parts about Teams within Teams, is that a lot of this can be managed on the back end um, through Microsoft 365. So for instance, every time I would create a new employee, I would assign them to specific groups. Those groups have membership to these teams so that the first time they log on, they're not having to click join team or do anything like that. Everything is populated for them. So uh, average uh, employee here at ThrottleNet would probably have about 10 teams they're part of, uh, different functions, stuff like that, and some for fun stuff. Uh, just to keep, you know, spirits up as much as we can during this. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, I love the fact that most, if not all of it can be done on the back end. It can be managed. Um, but there always comes a time where you're going to create a team individually. I do it myself um, for a specific event like Chris mentioned. So to do so, um, all of your options are right here on the right hand side. It will actually post all the public teams that you can see. It will not post um, private teams that you should not see. So upper management type teams are usually hidden in this area, but if you have permissions to them, you should be able to see them. Mm -hmm. Although if you have permissions to them, you should already have them as access if they're administered on the backside. So I'll kind of show you how easy it is to create a team, just so I can show you the context of a team and how it looks. So it's going to ask me how I'm going to build it. And I'm just going to kind of go through this. I'll explain a little bit. I'm going to build it from scratch. Um, I want it to be public. And I'm going to call this VIP test. I could tell everybody what the team was about. I don't think that's necessary for this. It'll create the team. It takes just a second. And it's going to publish it across the, off, across the board. So here is where I can actually add members to the team. It's not the only time I can add members. I can add members at any point in time. Any owner can add members. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna add Dakota again. He's being a good sport. Once I add him, it's gonna give me the option. Do I wanna make him just a member or is he an owner? Do I want him to be able to edit this? And in this case, yes, I do. I trust Dakota won't break this test. So what you see on the left-hand side now is you have the team name and the first channel. Teams can have multiple uh, subcategories underneath. So for instance, 
one team for management might have broken down five subcategories where different chat uh, logs live. It just, it's nice, it keeps it clean, and you might have different purpose where you don't want crossover. It's very easy to manage that way. Mm -hmm. One other thing I wanted to show you across the top is you brought it up, are files. So anytime a file is added to this, and you can add files, of course, down here with the paperclip, you would attach a file um, and it would send it, right? Everyone would be able to see it. Well, assuming that this chat is going to get hundreds, if not thousands of items long, you need a quick way to find those files. And there's two ways. Um, one, if you know the name of the file, you can always search up top. And that's an important function, uh, searching. You can search a full chat. If you remember a keyword or any pr particular item in there, you can search this entire chat. But more importantly, if you know it's a file, you'd be able to drill into files. And assuming there were files in here, which there are not, it actually lists. So there are teams where I have hundreds of files already that are stored in OneDrive, ready for me to retrieve at any point in time, but they're all integrated and you can search them out right here, real easy. And I do it almost on a daily basis as far as pulling different pictures or graphs or export CSVs. I, I do it, like I said, on a daily basis, but it's, it's very easy managing the teams, very easy, whether you do it through here or on the back end from Microsoft 365. Yeah. Fantastic, Chris. Did we yep. cover everything there? I do believe we did. I think we did too. Yep. All right. I will take over here again. Okay. So as we get towards the end of our discussion this afternoon and before we field any questions or do a little bit of free flow, um, of course the question comes up and it's already really been addressed at the offset of our conversation today. Is there an app for that? Of course, there's an app for Teams. Uh, when you talk in terms of the app for it, it is very slick and intuitive. It does offer all the same feature functionality for the most part that you might have on your desktop um, and are familiar with there, but obviously on a much smaller device, be it your tablet or be it your mobile phone. Um, I personally find this to be a, a very beneficial uh, simply due to the fact that uh, anybody can get in touch with me anytime and anywhere. The other nice thing about this, and although some might say I, I really prefer, Chris, that people don't get in touch with me anytime, anywhere, a um, couple things you can do there. First off, you can always set your status to do not disturb. It's just like a phone system would be. You can actually go in there and tell it I'm not available right now. I just assume not talk. It's 8 o'clock at night getting ready to go to bed. However, what I found this to be is that it's really been beneficial in helping me with team building and getting to know a lot of my coworkers a little bit better. Uh, what I mean by that is, is that I might be downstairs watching a movie or checking out a video on YouTube or otherwise, um, and I can immediately through Teams share videos and share files with folks after hours, and of course then that tends to strike up a conversation, hey, what's going on, what are you doing, how are you dealing with all this stuff, all that good stuff. So um, I've been spending a lot of time getting to know folks in a little bit different setting. Uh, it doesn't actually require that I do a video or audio chat with them, but we can kind of bounce back and forth share funny jokes, share GIFs, um, share video files and otherwise um, during off hours, which again helps in team building because people just get to know each other. Um, and when they're doing it in a, a less formal setting, um, you know, it, it tends that people tend to work better together whenever they are in that formal setting. So again, there is most definitely an app for it. And I would encourage you to download that app across all of the different devices that you guys happen to have. So again, um, it is very slick and intuitive and is going to work in the same way as um, the app that you might have loaded on your local desktop. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do here and what we discussed yesterday as we were getting ready for our, our webinar today is that um, Chris, again, being such a big fan of Teams, we thought it would be a good idea to just give him a couple of minutes to go ahead and just show some tips and tricks of things that he personally enjoys about Teams and some of the things that he thinks you guys might benefit from. So that said, Chris, I'm gonna really hand the floor over to you. You let me know when you're finished and I will wrap things up for the day. While you're doing that, I'm gonna take a look at our questions and see if we also have anything else that I might be able to throw at you while you're going through this process. So the floor of the show is the floor is yours. Absolutely. And I've been fielding a few of the questions already. And actually now is a pretty good time to address those because actually sure. what has been asked so far are some of the things that are my favorite things. 
So the first question that Jeremy asked was, what is the email icon on the left-hand side? Well, email can be integrated into Teams. So if I were to click on the email icon, my full inbox is available to me without having to minimize it, go to Outlook, um, have anything like that. Now, for this test user, for security purposes, um, you know we're very serious about security around here. Um, the <laughs> security manager did not want me to tie to the Open Exchange with this account, so we have not configured this account for OWA. I can tell you that my uh, personal account on my computer is tied, so I do have full access to the mailbox. So you can integrate. And integration is probably the number one thing I would go over in this part. Besides integrating um, Outlook, one of the things we've done here internally, and I'm sure it can be used for multiple different companies in multiple different ways, but we have an automation engineer, his name's Kevin Cowger. Uh, he was able to figure out a way, and this is one, a real slick thing, Whenever we have a client whose server goes down, we get notified four different ways. And I thought, well, why can't we get notified a fifth? So Teams is that way. So not only is it blowing up phones, it's blowing up emails, it's blowing up systems. I'm sure if anyone's been here, you've seen the boards we have. It's obvious if we have anything down because it's all over the place, red letters, handle it. Well, one other area we wanted was Teams. We asked Kevin Cowger, Kevin, can you figure it out? Uh, and Kevin figured it out. So we get notifications on big events. Uh, it actually has a tie-in where he actually, you know, goes through PowerShell, puts it right in Teams so that we can get notifications and it can be individually listed so that this VIP test might be the only group that gets a certain type of notification. It's real slick and it just shows you kind of how robust this feature is. Another thing I like to do, um, and this is more of on the for fun side, what we do here, like you said, uh, GIFs are huge. Oftentimes I respond to people with just a, just a GIF and they know what, it, what I'm trying to go for. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> polls, polls are big. Uh, we can, you can use polls for training. You can use polls for pretty much anything, although the guys like to use polls uh, to decide what's for lunch. But it's it's a nice function. And let me see if I have uh, one thing, and it's called forms, but one thing that my service coordinator, who's recently gotten interested in the stock market, reminded me this morning, is that it does have stock information on an individual basis. So you can look up a stock, post it right within a team if that's what you want to do. He wanted me to mention that. So forms. Um, this is a rather new uh, product from Microsoft as far as them heavy uh, putting research behind it. I use forms outside of Teams because I didn't even know it existed in Teams until recently. I use it for training. So I can create a form, a bunch of technical questions. I'll get it to my service desk and I'll say, please answer this by the end of the week. It'll actually grade it. It'll show you um, their answers. It can be multiple choice. It can be, you know, drop down. It has a lot of options in here. And so it's things like the integration from our, uh, our own software here and forms that I just absolutely love. I mentioned before the search functionality, I wish somehow I could have a fully um, filled out chat history so that you could see how cool that is. Because, you know, oftentimes you'll have that that random discussion with someone not remembering maybe who it was. It could be something un, unrelated to work. Search functionality will find out if you know enough. It'll go through all of your chats and it'll find exactly what you're looking for. So it, it can only be said so much that Teams is, you know, the number one tool. And I, and I say that because from 6.30 in the morning when my service coordinator is hitting me up to every morning at 7 when I'm uh, talking with our director of managed services, it is a, a full part of the entire day and it is the most heavily utilized tool we have here at Throttlenet, especially during this COVID crisis. It's, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Uh, I do believe I had one more question here. If you don't mind, Chris, I'll go ahead and- Oh no, please, Chris, the floor is yours. So Adrian asked, how do I use chats differently than the Teams? So, 
that's and that's a great question. Um, they both can be used, and I guess it would be on a per user basis how you want to use it. But let me explain why I use chat groups versus Teams. If I wanted an immediate response, I would create a group and add it to the chat because it's going to pop to the top of their chat with whatever I need. So if I need something immediate, it's going to pop right to the top. As a new group, it's bolded. Now, if I'm in Teams, I can make it pop by tagging that person, just like you would in any of social media where you can tag them and then it'll give them that activity indicator. But assuming you've got 30 conversations, the newest one actually goes to the bottom. So my assumption is that they're in chat more than they're in Teams. So that's where I would use chat versus Teams. Now they do have to go in Teams quite often, but they kind of bounce back to chat because it is the live nature of support. They're always getting requests you know, by the minute. And those typically do come through a group chat that Dakota himself started for the service desk. So to answer your question, it's per use. And I'm sure there's probably some other reasons why you do that. But as far as why I use chat versus Teams, that would be why. It would be just because I find it to be more immediate if I use chat versus going through the teams. Now there are times I do use teams if I need uh, an entire team of engineers to weigh in on an issue and it has time behind it. It's not crucial. It's, hey, I'm seeing these issues more and more. Can someone look into this and then weigh in? That's when I'll use teams because the context then stays within teams and underneath that uh, that message there. Let me see. I think I got one more open question. Let me see if I can. You had one, Chris, if I may, on what's yeah, the wiki. The oh, the wiki button. It's like an internal, yeah. uh, like a KB, where you can actually add um, documentation for that team, specific to that team. And I didn't go into much detail when we were going into like meetings and such, but it is, import it is important to note that things like this, where you can document and leave that document as far as anything you might have needed covered within that, you can do in meetings. So you can actually have meeting notes that everyone's adding to during your meeting. Meetings over, you can retrieve those notes. You can use those notes. I don't know why you would, but maybe print out those notes, um, but they're there for you. So it's it's fully functional as far as, you know, creating like a wiki in this, as far as information for different content and subsections of that content. Yeah, so just like Wikipedia essentially then, where it's got a variety of different subject matter in there, you can just go in and do a search or what have you for different entries. Right, correct. Makes sense. Yep. Um, do you see any other questions, Chris? I don't see any other. I oh, think like those might have one here. Hang on. Uh, document tree. Okay. Unfortunately, just because of its limit, you're not going to see. Basically, this is list format, what you're talking here, but you can open it within SharePoint to get the document tree. Um, but by default through Teams, you're going to have a list file. So that can be somewhat, I guess, uh, confusing if you have hundreds of documents. But if you know the name of the document, it's going to find it right away. So it does do it in list format here. And you can, again, add it both through the paperclip. And like it says here, you can actually drag files immediately if you're just posting it right to that team. Do we have any other questions or is there anything else that you might want to show, Chris? Let me see here. Looks like we have one pop up. Is there a way to assign a picture or bigger heading to the team name? Yes, absolutely. So the pictures you can you can sync. In fact, our all of our um, teams here have individual and unique pictures. You can make them whatever you want. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay. Are you going to walk through that, Chris? I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you real quick. It's, it's that simple right there. So we went into the settings. 
and you go ahead and you can just make the picture whatever you want there. It'll walk you through. It's the same as same format as your overall profile picture that we have top right with JT. It'll use it there. So, and we, yeah, absolutely, we use it all the time. Okay. Yep. So I do not see any other questions pending at this time. Mm -hmm. However, what I will always say as we kind of wrap things up here, and Chris, I'm going to take your screen back. Absolutely. If anything else, so I'm going to snag yep. that front. Give me just a second here. Okay. So back again. All right. So if you do have questions, though, give us a call. <laughs> Pretty straightforward answer to that. If after today's discussion you have any questions or anything else, feel free to give us a call at 866-829-5557. Um, in addition to that, of course, you can always reach out to us via email um, at support at throttlenet.com. If you're a current client of ours, you can always reach me at chris or sales at throttlenet.com and we can uh, assist in any way, shape, or form possible as it relates to that. Additional ways that we can help, of course, I know that a lot of the folks that are on the call today are managed services or managed network clients of ours. So, um, you know, we are available to you uh, with any uh, how-to questions you might have. So if you do have some how-to questions, you want to reach out to us personally, um, we can, of course, do our best to field those questions as they come in. Um, for those folks that are on the call today that are not familiar or aware of our managed services offering, essentially, it is where we are your full-time IT department. Um, providing you with maintenance, monitoring, and full management of your network infrastructure, as well as a fully staffed help desk, in addition to a team of IT professionals to assist you each and every day with ensuring that your network is functional uh, as it possibly can be. Um, in addition, of course, um, Office 365, sorry, Microsoft 365, is a part of the hosting solution or Azure family of hosting services, if you will, available through Microsoft. And we, as a Microsoft partner, and have been for a number of years, in addition to being um, certified, when we talk in terms of the Azure hosting environment, as well as the Microsoft 365 environment, um, can assist you in setting up, configuring, and getting a lot of the different tools and solutions and feature functionality in place that we reviewed today. So hopefully this was beneficial to everyone. We really do appreciate you guys joining us for these. Uh, I'll be quite honest with you, this started up as a part of what we're dealing with right now with all the stay-at-home owners, and what we have found is that it has been wildly successful. I do encourage everybody to join us going forward for this multi-part series. Again, next week, although it doesn't seem like there'd be a lot of content to cover, we're going to talk about OneNote. OneNote, believe it or not, we use in our office every single day, and I think we can illustrate to you folks how you can use OneNote in lieu of a Word doc or some other variation for collaboration as well as for team meetings and otherwise. So again, we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, as we wrap up here, if you have any questions or want to view this webinar again, please do so at throttlenet.com slash webinars. And as I would said, on behalf of myself, Chris, AJ, George, and every single one of our roughly 40 team members at ThrottleNet, we do truly appreciate the opportunity to serve. We appreciate your time today, and we ask that you wash your hands. So I appreciate your time today, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time at our next webinar. Thank you so much, and look forward to speaking with you guys soon.